Dr. Sherry PhD Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Matt Pearsall, and I'm so glad to be able to have you all join us today for the latest in our SEL and Education Speaker Series. Uh, today, we're joined by Sherry Whiten, the lead research scientist for the award-winning social-emotional learning podcast, The Imagine Neighborhood, as she shares practical strategies for making podcasts part of your teaching practice. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. Many for Children's offices sit on the unceded traditional lands of the Coast Salish people, specifically the first people of Seattle, Washington, the Duwamish tribe. As we honor the Duwamish people and their ancestors, it's also important that we consider our place in the past, present, and future history of the indigenous peoples of our region, as well as how we can best support them. Thank you. Now, I am very pleased to introduce to Dr. Sherry, as she's known in the Imagine Here neighborhood listeners. Uh, Sherry, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Matt. I'm really happy to be here. So I really want to sort of jump right into this, because I think it's a really interesting topic that I don't know a lot about. Um, and I'm sure other people are really interested in it as well. It's not all just about me. Um, so why why use podcasts in the classroom? What is it about podcasts that make them a tool in general that um, educators should be using? So I think for the adults who listen to podcasts, you know why you do it. You learn about really interesting things that are presented in really interesting ways. And there are also podcasts designed specifically for children um, that were designed specifically to be engaging and fun for kids. When kids are listening to something engaging and fun, it's easier for them to stay focused and remember what they've learned. Um, and sometimes podcasts take a really unique way um, or approach to learning a particular topic. And then as the educator, you can build on the episodes by having discussion after or planning out activities related to what the kids learned in the episode. So, um, it, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, I think listening to podcasts and other oral media, like story time, for example, supports other, other skills for children. So um, it can increase their literacy skills by expanding their vocabulary. And they're also using their imagination and creativity. Since podcasts are screen free, they're using their imaginations to think about what the characters look like and what they're doing. I think it's a really interesting point to bring up because because it's that screen free thing that really sets them apart from a lot of the other stuff like videos or other things or even like the the the, the in person communication that, that people be doing in classroom a lot of the time. Um, is there any research that shows uh, that kids learn better through oral and audio storytelling or especially around social emotional learning? Yeah, so there's a, a lot of research that looks at. Um, Sorry, totally lost my train of thought, but I'm Sorry. better now. <laughs> and go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, stories are really engaging, and they provide a lot of context and plot that makes information easier to remember. So stories help kids remember um, material from all different kinds of topics that we learn in the classroom. Emily Hopkins did this really cool study to address earlier findings that, kid, that found that kids didn't listen well to, or didn't, didn't learn as much from fantasy-based versus realistic stories. And so she did a very careful study where she had five-year-olds listen to either a very reality-based story or a parallel story that was fantasy-based. And when she tested the kids' learning of the content, there was no difference in learning. And she also found that if you had the fantasy elements before the learning content, kids actually learned it better than with the reality-based stories. And the reason for that, she thought, was that fantastical elements require a deeper level of processing. Um, and so that means if they're already doing that level of processing, it carries forward into the content that they're learning as well. Huh. For SEL in, in particular, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also lots of evidence that stories are a really powerful way to learn your social emotional skills. So Melissa Heath did a study that found that stories can be used to help kids build their SEL skills and have a really positive impact on their behavior. She um, thought that this happened because stories can actually change the way that children and adults um, think and feel, which can lead to behavior changes that are actually coming from within the child themselves, which is a really powerful way to change behavior. And Stephanie Jones did a review of, I think it was 17 different classroom-based SEL programs and found that almost all of them included stories or scenarios that illustrated the particular skill. So um, I just think stories are a really powerful way 
for anybody to learn things. And it's a great way for kids to learn SEL skills because stories can show a character not using their SEL skills and what happens then, and then show them learning the skill and the better outcomes as a result. Mm -hmm. And and it seems to me that that like when you're doing it with like a fantasy story or things like that, it also kind of is it also that it kind of gives a little bit of, of separation for kids between between it, it makes it a little more approachable. I think it can do, especially maybe with some harder topics. So if kids are dealing with a loss, for example, um, reading a story about loss that isn't specifically about their situation still gives them a way to see a way to unpack it or deal with it. Um, that they might not be already doing. Hmm. So uh, the Imagine Neighborhood podcast does a lot of this. I mean, that's basically what you do, right? It's it's it is it is it is storytelling around social emotional learning in a fantasy fantasy environment. Um, have you had a chance to do any research on Imagine Neighborhood podcast itself and it, and 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 how well it works? Yeah. So uh, we did a survey where we invited our listeners. To, well, mostly the parents, although some parents reported that their kids made them do the survey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we asked parents to come and do a survey so we could learn what was working on the show and what we could improve. And we learned that both kids and adults really loved the episodes. And parents said that their kids often listened to episodes over and over again. Um, parents really appreciated the fun of the show and the emphasis on the SEL skills. And um, they used it in two different ways. They used it to listen to as we released an episode each week. Um, but they also would go back if their child was dealing with something in particular or struggling with a particular SEL skill. They'd go back and find an episode related to that to help their child kind of see how to do it and, and extend their own learning. Mm -hmm. We also did another survey. Sorry, I keep cutting off. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Where we invited educators who are using the podcast in their classroom. and. Um, Nine people responded, and most of them were school counselors. And we learned that um, some of them had already been using the program at school um, before COVID hit and everybody had to do remote learning. But they were also finding it to be a really powerful tool to send home to families as something for families and kids to do together at home around SEO. Um, one, one counselor also told us that she loved the podcast and was able to link episodes back to school values. So she was making a connection for the kids between these fun stories and the values that they were living at school. So I thought that was a really great way to use the episodes. Yeah, that's a really neat, that's a really neat way to think of it. It makes me think about a lot, and I see this a lot in conversations around integrating social emotional learning in schools, that a lot of schools use PBIS or they use other positive behavior systems like that that incorporate like school values or school or 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 school commitments and things like that and mm -hmm. i think that's a really neat idea to be able to like connect the 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 podcast that you're doing and the social emotional learning your work doing or anything like using imagine neighborhoods for that and directly kind of linking it directly to the expectations that students have uh for their behavior at school yeah exactly um so I think kind of based on what you've been hearing and what you've been seeing around how people are using um, using Imagine Neighborhoods or podcasts in general in schools, what are some activities that you think that educators, teachers and counselors, folks that want to start doing this sort of work in their school and classroom, what can they do? What are some what are the things they can take back and start doing today or tomorrow? Yeah, so this is something we think about a lot um, uh, at the Imagine Neighborhood. And um, one thing we do is we have a weekly newsletter that anybody can sign up for includes a quick overview of the episode for the week and then provides some related activities. So for example, you might get a fun fact related to the um, episode, an activity prompt such as draw a picture of Macho Supreme jumping off the building because he does that sometimes. Um, <laughs> and also a prompt to think about the lesson that the kids learned and then talk to their adult about it. So for example, if it's uh, the episode was about having to practice to get better at something, we have a prompt for the kids to ask their grown-up about something that the grown-up had to practice really hard at to get good at it. So we try to suggest different kinds of episodes each week or different kinds of activities each week to um, help parents and educators extend the activities beyond the episode itself. Mm -hmm. So the way the news would you're seeing is that uh, an educator would share the share an episode, the podcast episode with their students in their class, and then follow up with the activity afterwards. 
Yeah, exactly. And you don't even have to do it. You don't have to do all the activities, obviously, mm -hmm. but you can also like do an activity a day mm -hmm. and just that way you're keeping the content of the episode fresh in children's mind, giving them more opportunity to process and internalize it. Mm -hmm. And, and what age levels do you think this would be, this, this works well for? Um, I mean, imagine neighborhoods and then in podcasts in general, where do you see this sort of, this sort of um, being most appropriate? Yeah, so what we learned from our parent surveys is most of the kids are between about five and eight years, but we've heard from parents who have their two-year-olds listening to it and their 13-year-olds listening to it. <laughs> so, it, and actually we have friends who don't even have kids who love the episode. So even adults really just like to listen to it. But I think the really sweet spot is probably between kindergarten and grade two. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so we've been talking about the Imagine Neighborhood as a podcast that, that educators can use for, for social emotional learning, but where, where can they find the Imagine Neighborhood? Well, we have a website. Um, it's imagineneighborhood.org, and I think Matt's going to share that into the chat. Um, so there you can listen to episodes. You can sign up for our weekly newsletter, um, and you can also just see what other information activities are available on the website. Some episodes have their own activity sheet that you can just download um, and use with your class. Wow, um, it's really neat. I, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to confess that I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm somewhat biased in this conversation because my children listen to the Imagine Neighborhood and and really enjoy it. Um, but uh, but uh, I, I, you know, I don't. I didn't know about the the newsletter. I didn't know about the activities that you have connected to it. So I'm really excited to go check that out. Uh, and I've also heard from from educators that are using the Imagine Neighborhood podcast in their classroom, and they're very excited about it. Um, for for folks that haven't listened to it, it's super fun and approachable. Um, and 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 uh, and and I think it's just it's, it's it's a really cool thing to hang out. And 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 I'm not the only one that thinks that, right? Y'all are all all over the place as far as like like um 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 like ratings on ratings on on yeah, we were um, the top family or children's um, podcast on um, iTunes for a while, which was very exciting. We got the um, American Librarians Award for, uh, it was the first time they ever gave it to, to something that was not a book. Um, so we won that. I think it was last year. We, that was really exciting. So yeah, we've gotten a lot of recognition and um, librarians actually are also using the program um, when they have kids in their library. So mm -hmm. it's probably most of the time, but this is a specific activity. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities to use the program in school settings. That's cool. That's neat. And I, and I know that there's there's librarians here in the SEL and education community too. So that's a really neat thing to kind of think about that, that I hadn't considered before, that this could be a library activity as well. Yeah. Well, Dr. Sherry, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time, talking about podcasts, telling us a little bit about the Imagine Neighborhood. Uh, encourage everybody to take a look at the links to check it out. Um, and, and if you've got questions or anything like that, uh, and you're not watching this live, um, feel free to, to, to post them in the, in the, in the SEL and education uh, community. Uh, and I know that there's folks from Imagine Neighborhood who are there who'd be happy to like jump in and, 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 and connect with y'all. Um, and if you're watching this somewhere that's not the SEL and education community, and you're wondering about Wait a minute. Where is this SEL and education community that uh, that you that, that of which you speak? Uh, here it is. So, uh, SEL, and SEL and education community is the uh, largest community of practice for SEL educators, uh, as far as I know, out on uh, out on the interwebs, completely public and free. Uh, we would love to have you come and join us uh, and uh, and join in the conversations about things like this, about all sorts of different things from people all over the world who are as interested and as focused on social emotional learning as you are and, um, and would love to connect with you. So until our next SEL Education Speaker Series event or until I see you all in the community, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, it's, really been, uh, it's really been a pleasure. Take care.